The first thing I have to say is that the emphasis on standardized testing has been profoundly affected, has profoundly affected the educational experience in Oregon public schools. Several teachers, parents, and students will paint that picture for you. It's not just a, the number of times the tests are administered, although that's one issue. The ever higher stakes attached to the results of these tests necessarily makes it that what that makes that which is tested the highest priority when it comes to <coughs> curriculum. The second thing is that these tests are expensive. That's not just a statement of fact, it's also a big part of why this change has taken place. The extent to which our schools have been overrun with the emphasis on testing is more a result of successful sales pitches than evidence of benefit. Here in this building, we're pretty fixated on one budget, the one where we decide where to spend our, our limited dollars. In a public school classroom, there are several resources that are also on a tight budget. Time, the teacher's attention, the student's attention, everybody's enthusiasm, to name some. When we're thinking about costs versus benefits, those budgets have to be taken into account. In education policy, we talk a lot about outcomes. I don't disagree with that, that intention, but a test score is not an outcome. What outcomes are we really talking about? What, for example, will members of the current generation of school children be doing when they reach their 20s and 30s? Will they be part of an economy of innovation or at the mercy of an economy driven by innovators elsewhere in the world? And I'm not asking about what they will do to earn their living, although that's important. I'm talking about how they will participate as citizens. How will they raise their own children? How will they process the information bombarding them in order to make decisions in our democracy? Will they be literate enough in the skepticism and urge to verify that characterizes science to avoid manipulation by junk science and snake oil salesmen? Will they be literate enough in math to avoid manipulation by bogus statistics? Will they be literate enough in history to appreciate lessons our society has already learned? Or will they be doomed to repeat them? Will they be able to follow a logical argument and will they be able to make one? Will they have the capacity to appreciate the many wonderful things created by human minds, hearts, and hands? Will the wisdom of the ages inform their lives? Those, these are some of the questions that trouble me because that's how you plan for outcomes. Whenever a child score on a reading, whatever a child score on a reading test, if that child doesn't appreciate reading as a gateway to knowledge and experience, then we, and I emphasize we, not the child, fail. If it is found that these tests impair rather than promote the outcomes we really need to see, then well, let's just say that they're not, they don't represent money well spent. Now I can't tell you the number of times I've listened to presentations regarding educational programs and measurements with a glance towards me. The argument being, be, begins that this is for those poor children and children of color, or so-called at-risk children. That this is about closing the achievement gap. To that I say, frankly, give me a break. Again, I don't give a rip about a test score gap. I care about a gap in richness and breadth of experience. I care about a gap in vision of what the future holds. I care about a gap in enthusiasm for academic subjects that are gateways to real success. I'm tired of hearing these kids discussed as if they're damaged goods. Yes, it's true that some families have more capacity. Excuse me. It's true that some families have more capacity to provide enriched opportunities for their children. But the answer to that disparity is not to subject, to subject those with such without such opportunities to a stripped down program in school. And it's certainly, damn it, excuse me, it's certainly not to make school more tedious. Again, the outcome that matters is a couple of decades away when the elementary students of today are the young professionals, inventors, entrepreneurs, artists, and tradespeople, and the young parents of tomorrow. I don't think that the test vendors of today have the capacity to define that outcome. Yet that is exactly the risk we have taken. By devaluating, thank you, by devaluating educational professionals and, de de and delegating curriculum to test developers. Now the stories told today will be characterized as anecdotal, but that's the point of this bill. We have gone, so far, gone far down the trail of committing resources of time and money to this testing regimen, and as it turns out, far down the trail of allowing it to drive what our students study and how they study it. It is past time to get some hard evidence as to whether we are on the right trail. Because if we're not, every school year is another year going in the wrong direction. This bill simply recognizes that educational policy should be evaluated as to real outcomes. 
It calls for an evaluation of the effects of standardized testing as currently mandated, a cost-benefit analysis, if you will. I believe it is vital that this take place so that when we come back into session in two years, we have solid evidence as to which, on which to base our decisions. Thank you. I think there are several others here to testify who can do a better job than I can of giving you a feel of how the learning environment, the school day, and the school year have changed as a result of the focus on high states test. Thank you.